Bonjour, bienvenue. This is our book club, the social chapter. Today, we are discussing 24 hours in Paris. That was just for you, Kwame. It is by Rami Mundi. This is a novel that transported us to the city of love. So it was, it did it? Yeah, yeah we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Only fitting uh, that we bring a taste of Paris into our studio today. Thank you very much, Melanie. Thank you. Jess, why don't you give us a synopsis? With delight. We all love a good romance, and it gets even better when we're whisked away to Paris. This book centers around two co-workers, Jake and Mira, who are on a business trip in France. So they get stuck together when they miss their flight home. Mira has a whole bucket list of sights to see, and Jake ends up going along for the ride. So can opposites attract? It's a classic premise that is at the heart of many rom-coms, including this one. It is true, and I'm curious to see what you all uh, thought of this book. So we're gonna begin by rating the book out of 100 using our literature meter. Ooh, fancy. Ooh. Oh yeah, the lit meter. Woo! Uh, each of us is gonna have uh, 20 seconds to talk about our rating. Lainey, what did you rate this book? I rated this book uh, a 65, mm -hmm. and here's why. I love a rom-com, I love a romantic trope, especially the enemies to lovers romantic mm -hmm. trope. For example, Pride and Prejudice, Darcy and Lizzie, that's mm. the most famous one. But what you need is vinegar and heat and spice, and these two characters were not bringing that for me. It did not live up to this classic trope, so I couldn't go higher than 65. Okay. Fair enough. Fair. fair enough. Fair. We respect you. Yeah, fair. Okay. Fair. Who's mm -hmm. up next? Mel, I think you're me? up next, I think. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I gave this book a 70. Okay. Out of 100, and here's why. Uh, if you've never been to Paris before, this is the book for you. It reads like an easy breezy city guide book with a fling thrown in to keep your attention on the tour. Have your notebook next to you, jot down all the landmarks, the buildings, the cafes, the restaurants you need to hit up, even specific foods to try when you're there. Yeah. Macaron. Paris is one of my favorite cities in the world, so while the book doesn't quite capture the deep history and culture and people <laughs> there, uh, it could be a great starting point to plan your first trip to Paris. Yeah. Oh, that is yeah. great. That is Thank good. You. Cheers to that. Cheers. Okay, so I gave this book um, a 50 out of 100, and here's why. Because there's a 50% chance this book is for you. Maybe you like the movie Before Sunset, except for all that interesting conversation part. Then this is for you. Or maybe your nerves are shot and you just want a romance with low stakes. Like the scariest thing that happens is someone forgets the umbrella and it rains then this book is also for you. I do think there's an audience for this book, it just wasn't me. Fair, oh, okay. fair enough, it happens. Fair. Fair. I, I gave this book, like Lady, we twinned, uh, a 65 out of 100, and here's why. If you're someone, like Jess said, if you who loved Before Sunrise or Sunset, or you're dying to travel after this endless pandemic, this might be the summer read for you. I enjoyed the writer's passion for all things Paris, but I couldn't help wishing there was, well, more sex. Yeah. <laughs> there was no sex. Although by the end, after reading about these two characters, 24 hours filled with rich foods and drinks, I empathetically felt exhausted and gassy, so maybe it was best that there wasn't mm. any sex. <laughs> okay, so we gave our ratings, but the average rating that our audience at home gave the book was 75 on our lit meter. Wow. Okay. There you go. So our audience really liked it. Yeah. Okay. Je mange mon croissant, désolé. Laura on Instagram wrote, that means I ate my croissant. I'm sorry, I got it. I got it, we got it. Yeah, we got it. Wow, mm -hmm. uh, here's Laura on Instagram. Uh, is this what, oh, it doesn't say this on my screen, but I'm gonna read what's on the screen right now. I'm loving the book so far, such a strong connection between Jake and Mira, can't wait to see where it goes, and I feel like I'm getting a tour through Paris. That's, what you, that's said. similar yeah. to what you said. Yeah. That's what I said, yeah. Very similar, I like that a lot. Did you, did you feel like there was a, hu a huge a spark? spark? Yeah. Not really. I was waiting for the heat. Yeah, I really, I wanted some clothes off. Yeah. I needed something to happen. I, they were drinking a lot of wine. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that's what the whole thing is, like the enemies to lovers. Like you want that bigger, you want that tension yeah. where you're like. Well, there was a little bit, there was a lot of I, like misunderstanding each other, not quite yes, saying classic. like, I, yeah, it's a very classic trope in rom-coms. Mm -hmm. It's like, I think he likes me, but I, doesn't like me. And then him thinking, and they weren't like, you know, it was near misses. But by the end. It was really slow for me. Well, I was just so surprised. Yeah. If you can write anything you want, it is your book. Give me at the end of Paris a grand hotel room. And a climax? And a climax, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. You know what they call that in the romance um, genre? genre? Closed door versus open door. Oh. So this was a closed door romance book. Mm -hmm. There's like a oh. whole language around it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Did we so like? We don't, 
Do they I like the I think there course. must be, as I said, there must be an audience for it. Mm -hmm. It's for the, the closed tease. door because it's, it's the, the tease. tease building it's not up. like mm. I don't mind. Like I don't mind the closed door. No. For example, I cited Pride and Prejudice, mm -hmm. and you I know Jane Austen wasn't door. exactly open up opening yeah. up the door. You're right. But that's why you need more of the tension built in, right? right. Like that's where you release your horniness mm -hmm. is, yeah. is through those moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you rooting at all for for this couple? Like, did you say I really want them to end up together here? Hmm. Like I, I didn't. I wasn't rooting I for wasn't it. I wasn't either. No. Yeah, I wasn't rooting for them. I was like, you I... don't deserve each other <laughs> right now. Yeah. I don't know what it was. I was like, no, give me some fight. Give me something mm -hmm. so that there's a payoff. Maybe. I, yeah, I certainly don't think characters need to be likable. And in many instances, some of the best characters, I think, in books are deeply unlikable. Yeah. But um, they're, 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 I can't put my finger on it, but there was something both with Jake and Mira mm -hmm. that... I didn't care what happened to either of them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it's because maybe we didn't get to know enough. We had a backstory of uh, of Mira uh, knowing that she has gone through uh, a recent end to a relationship, and so I mean, I was kind of rooting for them, but I, I I didn't I wasn't as invested maybe because I didn't I didn't know enough about them. I wanted to know more about right. her background, more about his background. Who are they? What makes them tick? And it just didn't quite come out. Mm. I think I would have been more invested if there was more drama. Yes. Right? Like, well, you know what I said? Like, the drama was it rained and they forgot the umbrella. Right. Exactly. Right. The drama on the boat, on the scent. That Something. was pretty. Yeah. You know when you watch mm -hmm. a rom-com or you read a rom-com, there's a moment where they either break up or they they go through, like... Yeah, you're a, not sure if it's going to... And it hits you in the stomach. Yeah. And you, you know, it's very angsty, but it's a good... Like, the, I I wasn't worried about them. Yes. That's what right. it is. That's yeah. a nice way to yeah. put it. I wasn't worried yeah. about them. Right. They're yeah. invested in the outcome. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. this book had me reminiscing about my trip to Paris back in 2001. Oh, my gosh, so cute. Many of you at home shared a bucket list of what you would do if you had 24 mm -hmm. hours in Paris. So, ladies... I want to know, what would your perfect date in Paris look like with your partner? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I know. I mean, it's technically, I love Paris. You have it all planned. Oh, already. yeah. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. But technically, it wouldn't be in Paris. It would be in Versailles, oh the Palace gosh, of Versailles, of outside of Paris. And I would want to eat in the Hall of Glass Mirrors all by myself with Ryan. That's all you're doing in the House of Glass Mirrors? Well, obviously not, Cynthia. <laughs> Because it's full of mirrors. <laughs> okay. so, yeah. Oh, my gosh. What about you? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I what, what are you doing? that. Mm. Oh, let me grab my pearls. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd stay in Paris. I would shop. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, are we, is this romance? It's self-romance. This is self-romance. Sure. I'd yeah. go by myself. Yeah, go. I'd romance myself. I love this. So I'd go shop. Yeah. I'd stay at, um, I'd stay, where would I stay? I'd stay at that, remember that um, Sex in the City Hotel? Which yeah. Was, yeah. The, yeah, it starts with an A. Um, so I'd stay there and have that balcony and recreate a balcony Athena. moment. Okay, I love like it. Like a movie montage moment. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay uh, we need to reveal our next social chapter read as voted by you, mm. our viewers at home. So our next social chapter selection is, get ready for mm. it. It is Sing. Where the Grass gra is, is Green and, and the Girls Are Pretty uh, by the <laughs> best-selling author of The Devil Wears Prada, Laura Weisenberger. Weisberger. Um, the author brings us another captivating tale about womanhood and the endless struggle between career, family, and health. It's about two sisters and their seemingly perfect lives and perfect lies. This book Ooh. promises to be the guilty pleasure, although you should never feel guilty about your pleasures, but it is the book you need on a hot summer's day. On Brian Cynthia Lewis. Right, thank you. Listen, thank you. Uh, we always want you to join along with us. We love it when you join in. So engage with us on social media using the hashtag the social chapter. There it is. We can't wait to hear what you have to say about this one. Um, chin chin. Chin chin. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, Cheers. won't you please take me home? Bring won't it you home. please take me home <laughs> with our mocktails? Our mocktails. We'll be They're back. Gorgeous. 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 We'll be back right after this.